Hey guys, on today we're going to be answering some of your questions. The first being the RPM Act. Um, is it still has it gone through? Is it dead? What's happening to it? So we'll discuss that. Also, some latest uh, one of the latest questions regarding the EV tax credit. Um, that's been a big topic of what's happening since it's now enacted and there's been some changes. So I'll get into that. And some other questions that came from you guys, um, like why buy from us directly instead of the manufacturer? Wheel lead times from Japan, from Taiwan, what's going on there? Um, and as well, um, if you purchase an exhaust, does it void your warranty? So let's go. Hey guys, and welcome back to another Talking Mods. I love doing these segments with you guys because this is where you guys ask your questions, I get to answer them, and that's what this has all been about. Um, I'm the CEO of Mod Bargains, and education is a really big part of it, and I created this Talking Mods channel as an education, as a platform for the, the industry, so that you guys can ask questions to learn about it, um, and be wiser about it, so you guys understand what you're doing when you're modifying your car, or even understand when you're making purchases and how to make the right purchases. So um, again, Mod Bargains, I've been doing this for 19 years and it's going to be 20 years pretty soon actually. So it's pretty crazy when I start thinking about it, but a um, lot of experience, a lot of experience with the team. We have an amazing group of guys that um, are always contributing to my knowledge. They're, I'm contributing to theirs and we just keep on. Uh, and the rest of the, the vendors and suppliers, it just keeps on growing for, for us and it keeps changing in, the, in a better and better way. So guys, I'm going to answer your questions. If you guys are looking up to, to ask your questions, once in a while I'll take it from your YouTube, but most of the time, check out our Instagram. If you haven't checked out our Instagram, it's on the Mod Bargains Instagram, and we will post when it's time for our Q&A, and we will take some of the questions out there. We, we might not take all of them, but we'll take some of the ones that we think will go onto the video that we think can help out everybody uh, generally. So I will jump into it. I'm not trying to be rude. I am going to be reading it, so we are going to be looking at it. All right. So the first one comes from uh, Chris, wheel lead times. Um, wheels from Japan, what's going on uh, versus Taiwan or here in the US? Wheel lead times, okay. Uh, kind of a difficult question and probably because you're probably shopping is where this came from. So uh, if you've been shopping around for wheels and if you're looking for wheels, understand that certain types of brands are sometimes not carried here. Uh, not carried in bulk, right? So you can't have every single, for unless your car is extremely popular, then more than likely, it's an extremely popular car modified, then more than likely you're gonna have some inventory being kept in one of the warehouses, either by us, another retailer, um, a distributor, or so forth. But oftentimes that's not the case. So let's say you were looking for Volk T37s, which come from Japan. Well, those have really long lead times, during COVID, the lead times were extreme, um, but those in general will, can be about six to 12 months because you gotta remember it goes from Japan and they wanna bring it over on uh, container freight. So when it's on a container freight, it also adds additional time rather than shipping it direct. Now, can you pay probably additional to have it air freighted? Yes. So we do see some like Taiwanese, like forge companies now sending wheels directly air freight, which is great because then it saves a ton of time and we could see them, you know, a brand like that we carry, BC Forge, for example, can, can can we can get it within like five weeks. So it blows it away. But then we've got companies here in the US that are so backed up, if it's a forged wheel and they're producing, right, that they're so backed up, they'll be five to six months behind brands like HRE and so forth. Other brands that are going to have like a casted, right, let's say their flow form and so forth, Sportline, uh, Forge Star and so forth, they're usually going to try to have that on the shelf. But if they don't have it on the shelf, they're usually going to be in production. And what that means is if it's in production, obviously whoever you're dealing with should be giving you, trying to give you an ETA. Is it in production? How long is it going to take? So if the wheels are made in Taiwan, typically we'll see, you know, about a two to three month wait. Sometimes we'll see it far longer. You know, certain brands will take longer, obviously, where they're coming from. But you should always talk to your retailer, figure that out, and that's probably where this question is coming from in terms of lead time. Next question. Um, Nicholas, Nicholas here, why should I buy from Mod Bargains, Mod Bargains when I can buy directly from the manufacturer? 
Uh, great question. Uh, if you can, uh, that's unfortunate for us, right? But not really. The reality is that usually when you buy with us at Mod Bargains, we actually give you an additional discount beyond it, unless we just can't. But we try to help you out in multiple different way, uh, ways, right? So you develop a customer customer profile with us. We carry a lot more products than just that one brand. So let's say that brand is, I don't know, an exhaust. Uh, let's, I'm going to use AW Exhaust. So AW Exhaust, you can purchase directly with them. Um, but you would pay about, I think the price difference is close to like 8% difference. So there's an 8% saving that comes with us. Let's say we both have the exact same price. Why would you still want to come with us? Because you're probably not just going to modify just your exhaust. You're going to modify maybe your suspension, your wheels. You might get an intake. We carry a lot of other brands. So as you develop that customer profile, if we can help you out and you've, de you've really developed a relationship with us, we'll see what else we can do, whether we can help out more in shipping, we have, you know, we have a higher volume in shipping, so the price will go down in shipping. There's all kinds of areas. The other side of it is that we'll sometimes carry the inventory when the manufacturers don't. So brands like that exhaust, they're amazing, but they don't keep a whole lot on the shelf. So we keep AWE on the shelf here. We also keep it, um, we also have it in distribution. So that means we can even pick it up from other distribution. We can find all the resources possible to us when you come directly to us. So there's a lot of advantages by working with a retailer rather than working with the manufacturers. And I've seen manufacturers recently just come out and like they're coming out swinging and they're trying to grab retail sales. Well, it's a, you know, at the long run, I don't think it really helps the, the, you guys in, in the long run. Um, but I think there is expertise there that we offer. But again, it's up to you guys. And obviously we appreciate the business when it comes to mod bargains. Next question. Um, so this is in regards to the EV tax credit. Um, and, uh, I have I'm still trying to answer all your guys' questions in the EV tax credit, but the number one thing, um, before I jump into the question is, um, it, it's in regards to, um, it's in regards to please use the links and we'll put the links into this Q and A again. Um, there's a government link there and there's a consumer reports one, the government one and the consumer reports ones are really the, the the best ones try not to look at other websites that are just making up some stuff because this question really leads up to it because if you use the government link you'll see that certain vehicles have not qualified that we thought would when we made that video so um brian asks uh i'm looking to purchase the model y but i am not seeing it on the ev tax credit what is going on so great question brian um so this is what happened here the IRS has come out and said that the Model Y does not qualify as an SUV, which the Model Y is definitely an SUV, but they're saying it's a sedan. And they've now put that in with a, a couple other vehicles as well, basically disqualifying it within the price bracket that it was expected to get the tax credit. So this was unheard of. Nobody expected this. Um, so it's just on a certain amount of vehicles. That's why I keep saying use the links. If you're in question of, hey, will this fit? And all the hybrids, the plugins are still working. But the problem is that they're also trying to classify SUVs as a 6,000 pounds and above. So they're to the detriment of the manufacturers, they're hurting the manufacturers for being more efficient by reducing the weight. I think Elon Musk made a, a tweet about it. And, uh, you know, like, what is going on here, right? So there is a petition going on on change.org. Um, I think like over... Over 30,000 people have already like um, petitioned for this. Uh, I recommend you guys do as well. Um, and people are, you know, for the Inflation Act to make a change on that. So on the EV tax credit so that it is applicable in the right way. So there's kind of like this loophole that the IRS is kind of trying to create by using 6,000 pounds for SUVs. Um, but otherwise, the EV tax credit is in full swing. And that's pretty much it on that. So next question. Um... Richard, um, Richard A. asks, if I purchase an aftermarket exhaust from you, will it affect my warranty? Thank you. Uh, Richard, it will not affect your warranty. There is the Magnus Moss Law Act, um, so we can put a link on there to explain it. But basically, it's a, it's a law that protects you from when you modify something um, on your vehicle. It is exempt. Uh, not exempt as in like your warranty. So your warranty is still applicable, but if something was related, so let's say the exhaust brackets or the exhaust hangers had an issue, they could say that's not under warranty, which makes sense. 
but they couldn't say that like, oh, your suspension, which let's say your suspension went out. Oh, your suspension is voided a warranty. That is not applicable at all. Uh, there are laws to protect you. And when dealers try to behave that way, just remind them of that law and usually they'll help you right out. If they are being that, that way, I obviously recommend a different service advisor um, as well because they're probably just trying to scare you and trying to, you know, trying to make sure that they get all the business directly to you. You can definitely modify your exhaust. Um, it is not against the law and this is, a, this is something that you have every right to. And in the last one, this comes from, this comes a question here from Ray. It's in regards to, um, it's the RPM Act. So Ray asks, did the RPM Act get passed? I'm hearing that it did not. I'm trying to understand what's the situation. So uh, Ray, to answer your question regarding the RPM Act, um, and we've done videos about this, right? And, um, you know, uh, I've talked about the EPA and so forth. Um, SEMA just uh, officially released, it was like breaking news information. The RPM Act did not pass, even though they said they had bipartisan um, support all across. We had 1.5 million people sign the RPM Act, which was amazing, and I talked about that. There's been a lot of support from, from us as a community trying to get the RPM Act to pass, but it didn't pass. Um, I know they're probably going back to the, to, the, to, the, to the chalking board, but I think the, so does that mean that race cars have died is kind of, I think, where you're going with this question. Does, like, are race cars going to, like this whole industry going to die? No, I think we're going to go back and they're going to revamp it. The, the main issues that they came up with were, you know, it, the law, it's the, the way they were trying to write the RPM Act did not make a lot of sense. So it needs to have like a give and take. Obviously, certain things are just not going to happen. Right, so certain polluting things are just not gonna happen. So it's a give and take anytime there's a negotiation, it needs to come back, but there's obviously a lot of support. There's been a lot of media press. We have to keep it still in front of it. We still have to stay in front of it. And as a community, we still have to be in front of it. And we've done that, you guys have done that. So you guys have done an amazing job. I do think there'll be a revamp, a change. I never particularly thought the RPM was that good because it doesn't protect retailers. It doesn't protect just street modifications either. So I do think that um, there could be a lot more done to that. And I've said this before, um, that the RPM should be across the board, not just race cars. It should be street cars and other vehicles. In terms of modification, it, it, can, it can work a lot better, but um, the fines are pretty hefty. And so that's a, a problem. Anyway, guys, uh, I don't want to go too long into that, but uh, I think it will get re re revised and you will see a new version of it. And guys, if you have any other questions, again, you can follow us on Instagram, our YouTube channel here. Put the questions below. I'll try to do, do my best to answer. Subscribe if you haven't already done so. And guys, I will see you on the next one.